Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 So, Heavenly Father, we thank you for tonight. We bless you. We honor you. We are grateful unto you for the privilege to come your way, to come and spend time with you, to know your mind concerning this that you've given us to study. Spirit of God, we ask that come and take absolute control. Teach us. We are ready to learn. We are ready to be corrected. So reveal to us what you want us to know in the mighty name of Jesus. We are ready. Lord, enlighten the heart of understanding. More insight, more revelation, more knowledge. Anoint the one who is going to lead us today. Speak to him, Lord. He, she is your vessel. Use him any way you want. And pour into her also. We thank you. Give her utterance, Lord. We ask for utterance for your, your, your daughter. In mm -hmm. Jesus' mighty name. And those that are on their way to join us, Lord. Quicken the, 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 their, their mortal bodies. The, mm -hmm. <laughs> so that they will know the agency of coming now. In the name of Jesus. We thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And I am recording this session. And so um, I'll post it there later on. So um, I don't want us to spend too much time because there's a lot to be studied. <laughs> <laughs> so over to you, uh, Minister Mariam. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We bless God for tonight. We say hallelujah to him for the opportunity to learn at his feet. Um, so our topic for tonight is um, taken from Leviticus chapter 4. It talks of the sin of ignorance. But most, um, most Bibles have um, the title of that um, scripture as the sin offering because um, the whole scripture basically speaks about um, what is supposed to be done to someone who commits um, an unintentional sin. Okay, so we begin with um, Leviticus chapter one, uh, uh, sorry, chapter four, verses one to three. Let us hear the word of the Lord. And it says that, let's, let's read from, Leviticus chapter four, verse one to two first. It says that, then the Lord said to Moses, okay, I'm reading from the life application Bible, or I should take it from the King James, New King James, okay, New King James. New King James says that, now the Lord spoke to Moses saying, speak to the children of Israel saying, if a person sins unintentionally against any of the commandments of the Lord in anything which ought not to be done and does any of them. If, verse three says, if the anointed priest sins, bringing guilt on the people, then let him offer to the Lord for for his sin, which he has seen, a young bull without blemish as a sin offering. Okay, so this is from verse one to three. We will look at the other verses as we go along. But our focus is on when the Lord said that if um, any the, the anointed priest sins or anyone sins unintentionally. So our key words over there. That is what we drew our, um, our topic from, to sin unintentionally. In other words, when someone sins um, ignorantly. So we we'll ask ourselves, um, what is to sin unintentionally? How does someone sin unintentionally? Um, it means that then there are two sides of the coin. If there is an unintentional sin, then there is an intentional sin. So for the intentional sin, we can say that an intentional sin is the sins that we commit because based on what we know, it is we, we commit those sins 
as a form of rebellion or you know you're not supposed to do this. You have heard the word of the Lord say, thou shalt not do this, yet you go ahead and do it. So that is a willful sin. That is um, an intentional sin. Then this, but here the Lord is saying that if you sin unintentionally, it means that there are some sins that you commit that you are not aware of that you commit them. There are some things that you go against, some commandments of the Lord that you go against that you are not aware of. That is the sort of sin the Bible is referring to as an unintentional sin here. So God is saying that. So as we, we read along, I believe that almost all of us have read the Leviticus chapter four. As you read along, you realize that God gave the categories of people who he expects or who, who, who will sin unintentionally, who if they sin unintentionally, um, certain purification rites should be done for them. And the first one was the high priest. And then it came to the, to the, to the people, the nation as a whole, if they sin what, unintentionally, what should be done and then he came to the leaders or the rulers of the nation. And then he came to the common people, like common people like you and I. Um, so it means that all these people cut across, the, the, the categories of people cut across everybody. Because in the nation, you have the priests here will say um, the pastors or the people who lead us to God. And then you have the leaders, those in authority, government um, appointees and stuff like that. Then you have the entire nation and then you have the common people, though we make up the entire nation. Everybody may make up the entire nation. So this, this is telling us how important God views on intentional sin. If it wasn't that important to him because after all, it is unintentional. Somebody doesn't willingly get up and say that I'm going to commit this sin, but that sin arises as a result of unawareness. In as much as it is an unaware sin, God is not taking it lightly. That is why he, he told Moses to give this instructions to the people of Israel that if you sin unintentionally, these are the things that you have to do before your sins will be forgiven you. And for after every purification for all the people, for all the, the, the people mentioned, after every purification, it says that and their sin and his sin will be forgiven and their sins will be forgiven. So after you have sinned unintentionally and you have gone through that purification rite, then your sin will be forgiven you. So this is an overview of what Leviticus chapter four talks about. Now let's go back to unintentional sin, the key words, unintentional sin. So I'd like to throw the question to us all, Unintentional sin. Please, who can tell us what an unintentional sin is? Auntie Jenny, you have your 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 notes. <laughs> <laughs> unintentional sin. How 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 come? What what can be as a result of an unintentional sin? Um, for instance, mm. let me let me use the relationship between a mother and a daughter. Okay. For instance, the daughter, especially where we come from, I come mm. from Ghana. My daughter comes from England. Okay. Uh, she doesn't know our culture very very much. Right. So there are certain ways she uses for me she doesn't realize probably it's an insult okay. but she uses them i have to tell her nana we don't speak to grown-ups where i come from 
we don't speak to grown-ups like that you mm. can't use words like but mom that's that's but mom that's stupid she mm. doesn't mean to tell you you are stupid she's telling yeah. you that whatever you are doing what situation you find yourself is a stupid yeah. scenario and she no. says it just like that so mm. she doesn't mean to insult me yeah but um she finds herself using words that are not uh that are me my culture is wrong right 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 so in this instance we can say that she had seen ignorantly or whatever she said was out of ignorance no, she doesn't yeah. know what she's saying thank okay. you very much yes that, that is, is how i understand it Yes, yes, you are very right. Thank you, Auntie Jenny. Um, my lady, do you have anything to add to that? Because you, you have said it well, and, and you have said it all. And like Jenny said, and you said it, um, earlier, that unintentional sin is not being aware. Not mm. that it, there is no law. Um, sorry, <laughs> so, okay. yeah, Jenny correcting her daughter because mm. then, um, the, the, there is a way that is acceptable to us the way we okay. were read, yeah. So, if there is another way that is being presented to us, then it's like I have to make you aware of what exists, sure, in a way there is a correction, but yeah, doing it because you don't know, you don't know mm. any better. So that, like it's ignorant. You are you are it's it's an unintentional thing. But let me read something that the good news translation said in the same verse of the verse two. It says okay. that to tell the people of Israel that anyone who sinned and broke any of the Lord's commands mm -hmm. without intending to mm -hmm. would have to observe mm -hmm. the following rules. So it's like, it's not something that is intentional. It's something you don't know. You don't intend yeah. to do it wrongly, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are very right, you are very right. Without intending to, without intending to. So the, the fact of the matter is, there is a commandment. Without the law, we cannot, we cannot say that we have sinned against anything. But so yeah. long as there is law binding us, it means that if we go against the law, then we have sinned. Yeah. So um, that is why God said that. God told Moses to tell, if anyone breaks the commandment, his commandment that he has given the people on, without intending to, they have sinned and they are guilty. Okay. Um, I can see Patrick. Patrick cannot hear me. Patrick, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I hear you. Yeah, Patrick, you're welcome. I'm glad you joined us. Oh, thank you so much. Patrick is my friend from secondary school. Oh, you're yeah. welcome. I, welcome. I, 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 I put it on my secondary school platform and today he has joined us. Patrick, God bless you. God bless you, Patrick. Okay. Um, Patrick, please, do you have anything to add to that? Yeah, I wasn't actually following from the beginning, but oh, I just okay. read briefly from Leviticus 4, mm. and um, I, I read the 1 to 3, talking okay. about um, ignorant sin and what you explained about. Okay. Yeah, okay. Okay. I, I, I really don't know the whole thing, but I, I would say, of course, that like the, the lady you asked shared about mm. her daughter from or her son from England mm. Mm. Um, the culture plays a key role in okay. what is in, what is known to be ignorant or what is not right and we know that the, the Bible was written with this idea in mind from a cultural background sure and the commandments of God still apply even to this time, though there sure. is grace. 
Mm-hmm. Because the Bible says without the law, you wouldn't have known the essence of sin. So yeah, right. it is important. But then what may be sinful to me may not be sinful to you. Right. Because it boils down to the intent, the, the, intent. the intention why you do that. And God looks basically at the heart and not really at the circumstance. So it is also important we consider these aspects and um, um, knowing the law or the commandments mm-hmm. of God will also help us to know what is sinful and what is not sinful. And that is right. why the Bible says that he that knows to do good and does not do good is sin. Yeah, and both. who is a person um, who has much and much will be expected. So we that we we have the privilege to study the word and to know the truth of the word. We must be careful that our ways are, are, are showing the ways of God and that our actions are not ignorantly leading people astray. Because, yeah. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Patrick, thank you so much for that input. In fact, you have summarized everything, but let's go on of this. <laughs> Patrick has concluded for me. <laughs> let's go on all the same. Okay, so um, on what accounts can we say that someone has seen ignorantly? And um, this question when, when I put down this question, the first person that came to mind is the Apostle Paul. Paul, mm-hmm. Paul sinned ignorantly because he, he felt that what he was doing was the right thing. I mean, when he was persecuting the church before his conversion, he felt that what he was doing was the right thing. So he sinned ignorantly. Um, in First Timothy chapter one, verse thirteen to fifteen, he says Paul was saying. Paul, so this is what Paul said. He said, "Even though I was formerly a blasphemer and a persecutor and a violent aggressor, yet I was shown mercy because I ignorantly I I acted ignorantly in unbelief." So here, Paul acted ignorantly because he felt what he was doing was the right thing. So a person will sin ignorantly when they feel that what they are doing is the right thing. For instance, um, like Auntie Jenny gave for instance, her daughter doesn't know that what she's doing is the wrong thing because She's for her, she does not have any law prohibiting her not to use that sort of word for the mother. What yeah. she has been exposed to is what she knows and it's what she feels is the right thing because probably she's heard somebody say that, she's heard probably a grown up say that there was no hula baloo about it, she's heard her friends say that there was no hula baloo about it. So for her, is the right thing to say or is the right thing to do? So someone will sin ignorantly because they feel that what they are doing is the right thing. But the Bible makes us understand that our actions, all our actions, must be in alignment with the word of the Lord. Because sometimes even your conscience can tell you to do something that may not necessarily be right. But then it means that you have to just oppose everything, your actions, your words to the word of the Lord, not just your conscience. So then I ask myself, um, what of the people who do not have the word of the Lord? Mm-hmm. What of the people who never heard the word of the Lord? 
they, they did things ignorantly. They may have sinned ignorantly. What will happen to such people? Would they be found guilty? Because they have no law, but they are being controlled or whatever decision that they take is based on their conscience. Mm -hmm. What their conscience will tell them is right, is what they will go with. Please, anyone has anything to say on what accounts is someone saying ignorantly? Like anything I think that's the say. last one you just said. When they don't know or when there is no law to guide them. Mm. But like um, I think like Patrick rightly added when he was doing, having um, giving his submission that um the, now the law has been written in the tablet of our heart. Mm -hmm. It's amazing how <laughs> you can suddenly know that and feel that, especially the ones who have accepted Jesus. You suddenly know that this is right, this is wrong. You are doing something and you will feel it. You will know mm -hmm. that this, this thing that I'm doing is wrong. Mm -hmm. So then the question of when there's somebody really saying ignorantly or when would you say a person is saying ignorantly, it's it's really really like really critical because for me this i think this this question is really why i it, it made this thing really bother me mm. Mm. when would somebody know i am sinning ignorantly mm. if ignorance like they say that if ignorance is a bliss Mm. And you read this in the word of the Lord, and he is mm. saying that make an offering, an atonement for somebody who has sinned ignorantly. Mm. Then we can't go on being ignorant of the of the of the word of the Lord. Exactly. 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 For me, and it's a very serious thing. I don't know how you see it, but for me, it is it is really serious because it this is it, and I think that where we are now even as christians we we all the problems and the challenges we are facing is because we are so ignorant of a lot of the laws of god mm. all mm. that all that let me not move ahead of but yeah the question that you asked that is what i would say i don't if i talk to him i'll be moving so much ahead of the pace that we are going so yeah uh, mm. that, that, yeah. i found something in can i speak sorry Yes, Auntie Jenny, please go ahead. I found something in Acts chapter 17, verse 30. Okay. And it says, God has overlooked the times when people did not know him, mm. but now commands all of us, all of them everywhere to turn from their evil ways. Mm. So if it says God overlooked the times that... People did not know him. I don't understand that part. <laughs> with, with regards to what we just said, yeah, this, uh, this submission, I don't understand it. Hmm. Um, Can I come in? Yes, yeah. Patrick. Yeah, um, I like what, uh, I don't know her name. Antigen. Antigen from Acts Act 1730 says. Yes. Um, Paul was speaking and addressing the people of Athens. And mm -hmm. at this point, he was so much engulfed with proclaiming Christ and telling the Jews that hey, the, the king that you are still waiting for has already come. Mm -hmm. And you know, the Jews as at now are still waiting for the Messiah to come. Um, so in the old days, because of man's sin, the atonement was by blood. And that blood mm. was by bulls, animals, and other things. Mm. But now, Christ has come in the person of God as a, as a lamp sacrifice for sins. And because of this, 
God sees that the sacrifice of Christ's blood as a perfect atonement for all sins before and even after. Therefore, mm -hmm. you could say that the penalty of sin is already paid for. Right. Now, what is left for men, for you and I to do, is to accept this perfect offering. If we do not accept this offering, there is nothing more God can do because everything we need now and the future is already catered for by God. And that is why if you're talking about um, the other, um, uh, other sister also said that the, the, the issue of ignorance cannot play now in our situation because everything we need to know about God is written in our hearts. Mm. Thank God he has given us the Holy Spirit. Mm. And the Holy yeah. Spirit reminds us, if you read John, it tells us that he will remind you of all truth, everything I have said unto you. And if you read Romans, Paul says that um, because the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and the unrighteousness of men because we deny the truth. You mm. know, because this truth is already revealed and he goes on to explain that this truth is already revealed unto men. We see God's mighty act in creation. Mm. We see his mighty act in how the earth and the world was made. We see mm. his mighty act in the ocean, we see it in um, how perfect he created human and everything. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. he, talk, he goes further and says that though they knew God, mm -hmm. they, they did not glorify him or give him the attributes. Mm -hmm. So he gave them to the desires of their own sinful hearts. Mm -hmm. and so now we have no excuse to say that mm -hmm we are ignorant of what God has already done for us or what mm -hmm. God has already purposed for mankind. You know, man wants to promote himself other than God. And so it comes with trying to intentionally, intentionally you know, deny that there is God. When deep down in their hearts, they know that um, there is something higher than us that we need to acknowledge. But because of man's ego and pride, mm -hmm. you know, we, we, we seem to brush it off. But mm -hmm. yeah. So mm -hmm. I don't know there if I answered or contributed to the question. There is, some, there is something higher. Auntie Jenny, Patrick, thank you. Thank you for that, for that contribution. Um, Auntie Jenny, um, I believe that when when, when Paul was saying that now God does not overlook the, um, please read that, that portion again for me. Because God has overlooked the times when people did not know him. Okay. But now commands all of, us, all of them everywhere to turn from their evil ways. Okay, okay. So um, I, I believe that this should be talking about um, people who did not know him through Christ. Because okay. initially, um, because in Romans chapter 1, verse 20, um, Paul was telling the Romans that the, the conscience and the moral standards of people who had not, or who were not children of God, because in the Old Testament, it was only the Israelites who were deemed the children of God. So those who were outside, who were called the Gentiles, who did not know God as their father, their conscience and their moral standards were um, the measures by which um, they will be judged. Paul said that um, it, it, in Romans 1, Romans chapter 1, verse 20, he says that, Men are without excuse because creation gives us, okay, so in the summary, creation gives us an understanding of God's invisible, invisible qualities, his power and his divine nature. So you, you, you cannot say that you didn't know God. 
So you've not heard about the message of Christ. And indeed, you did not hear about the message of Christ. So you can sin ignorantly and go scot free. Because creation, through creation, you should be able to see the invisible power of, like Patrick said, a higher force, a higher, a mightier hand at work. Mm. That, 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 that should make you um, submit to something. That should make you um, believe in something, if, if, if I should put it that way. And, and your conscience and your moral standards will judge you at the end of the day, because that is what the Bible says, that the people of old who did not know God they are, God will judge them by their conscience and by their moral standards of those times. So yes, God, now God, God, God cannot overlook ignorance. There is no excuse. So we, that is where we come to our next question where we say that, can ignorance be, be, a, be excused? Ignorance cannot be excused because now, we have grace, we have the spirit of God. And this, this, the second question when I asked, I wanted where I said, on what account will someone sin ignorantly? I wanted to add that. I believe that someone will sin ignorantly if the person does not know the word of the Lord, especially with baby Christians, somebody who has just been born again and um, is going through the process, is growing now in Christ. There may be things that the person may do that he or she may not know that, oh, okay, this is not as it's supposed to be done. Because there are some people who are, what's the name? They are children of God. They are Holy Spirit filled. Because once you accept Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit comes to live inside you. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit, they, they have not been, um, they have not, their senses have not been in tune with the promptings of the Holy Spirit that much. So there may be certain things they will do that, you know, will be out of ignorance because even when the Holy Spirit is prompting them, they wouldn't know. But once you go up in Christ and your senses, your spiritual senses are sharpened enough to the promptings of the Holy Spirit, you cannot see whether willfully or ignorantly. Okay. It answers um, my question. Okay. Okay. Mm. We thank God. We thank God. Vision virtuous women. Vision virtuous women. A jester. Probably she might be working. So. Oh, okay. That's a jester. Okay. And someone to join. Nana. He no, just joined, no, no. so <laughs> later okay, on. So we can go ahead, okay. So, ignorance cannot be excused. My sisters, I'm sorry, oh, I'm here, but um, mean to me, Kasawa, I'm Yeah, I, yes. I said, yeah, probably you might be working, so. Yes, please, thank you. No problem, Okay, so ignorance cannot be excused. My lady. Yes. Ignorance yeah, cannot... it cannot be excused. And I think that, that that question, this verse that um Jenny brought in Acts chapter 17 is just mm -hmm. a, an answer to that. Mm -hmm. Is can it be excused? And it's telling you now that these times, ignorance go, go, those times was those times that God would overlook, God overlook them. them. But yeah, now, but now, and, and now, that is no. happening, now. Now mm. that the Holy Spirit is inside of now, us, now mm. that the, the Trinity is inside of us, now the energy, you can't tell me that you no, are ignorant. No. Mm. It is no excuse. It is. It is. It is, it is I, I no excuse. It's about time we just take the word of God as it is. It says mm. no. So no. now that we are hearing it, repent. You can't. Amen. Amen. I have I have what it said. Everywhere, <laughs> repent. It's in, it's in me, my, the new King James that I have, it says that truly, 
these times of ignorance God overlooked, but now mm -hmm. commands all men everywhere to repent. to repent. So now that we are hearing this word, if we have been acting ignorantly of anything, we have to change now because we are without any excuse now. Mm. Amen. Amen. And, 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 and I can add that we will only act ignorant. You know, ignorance is as a result if of lack of knowledge. And why do we lack knowledge? We lack knowledge because we don't study. Don't so read the, word. Word, the word of God has been made available to us. So if you don't study, it is no fault of God. Yeah. His commands and everything is in the word of God. So why wouldn't you study to know what, what, what has been made available or to know what he says, the instructions, his commands, what he expects of you? You don't study and you say, oh, I didn't know that I shouldn't do this. No, God will hold you accountable and, you're sick, and you will be judged. He says, he, he says in the book, he said, he, he will be found guilty. Bring it, his, oh, where is it? Uh -huh. He says in the verse 30, he said, if the entire Israelite community sins by violating one of the Lord's commands, but the people don't realize it, they are still guilty. Yeah, and, and you know what that that it's it's uh, I, I would encourage everyone please spend time and read leviticus chapter four mm. because it i think that when you read it more you you will become aware that mm -hmm. you can't as a child of god you can't be ignorant no mm. you you cannot you just can't be ignorant and that mm. part that you read you know what in fact when i was reading it personally i was scared hmm. because mm -hmm. you know when where we are growing up, we keep on hearing this ignorance is a bliss. I don't know mm -hmm. if you heard that. Ignorance is bliss. Yeah. A, yeah. Mm -hmm. You you think that, yeah, it's bliss. You, you, oh, I, I didn't know so. But even in the law, in the law court, what do they say? They say that the fact that you are ignorant of the law, no, doesn't mean that you not that that it won't apply to you. Yes. Mm. It will be applied to you. But so why do we think that when we are in the kingdom of God, because of his mercies and his grace, we are exempted? But here mm -hmm. in Leviticus, God is saying exactly the verse 13 that you read. Mm -hmm. You see, and that is mm -hmm. why it's, it, uh, I, but it just falls back to how some of us, our generations begin to suffer because, because of some decisions and some ignorant things that we do. Exactly. And it falls back because you see somebody did, and then what that, what does the Bible say? All the Israelites, it affects. Exactly. Exactly. Look at them. Mm, yeah. exactly. exactly it's very true it's very true it's very true my lady because what 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 you what you act out of ignorance has their consequences whether good or bad and and most times even the consequences would not be applied to us but to our generations yeah. depending on whatever you did to our generations that is why that is why i believe that God, God wanted the Israelites not to be ignorant, not to act ignorantly. That is why he had to mention this to Moses to tell the people. Because if, if for instance, if ignorance, someone commits sin ignorantly and the person is so, um, God doesn't put any mark to it or um, God doesn't bring the person to judgment. I believe everybody... It will be a free for all, free for all, um, 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 and something for everybody. People, people will act intentionally ignorantly. If I should, if I should say that, people will act intentionally ignorantly because yes, because they have realized that oh, this person acted ignorantly and was you know went, went, went yeah. away with it, got away with it. So yeah. me too, I can do same. So because God did not want a repeat of some of these things. That is why he had to take this very seriously. Um, please, if anyone has anything to say before we move on. Nana, do you want to say something? Nana? Uh, please, I want to know the quotes that maybe you are basing on. Oh, Leviticus chapter 4. 
Leviticus chapter 4. Okay. Chapter 17. Oh, yeah. The Acts is Acts oh. 17, verse 13. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 My network is not helping me at all. Yeah, sorry Thank about you. that. <laughs> okay, sis. Okay, so in present times, mm -hmm. how, how will God deal with people who act ignorantly? In present times where we have grace, mm -hmm. there's grace, grace abounds towards mm -hmm. us. Christ has been made the sin of for us, yet some of us act ignorantly. How is God going to deal with us? Will he overlook There's grace. You know <laughs> there is grace. Yeah. There is can grace. I use but, can I use uh, can I speak? Yes. Yes, I'm Can I use um Hosea chapter four? Verses. My people are destroyed from lack of knowledge. Okay. Can you answer? Can you answer the question again, please? Um. How is God dealing with people who sin ignorantly in this present dispensation where grace abounds, where Christ has been made a sin offering for us? How is God dealing with us? Um, we, can't, we, can't, we can't live in ignorance of his word. Okay. Because his word is uh, in plain black and white for us to read and know. This is one of the reasons why we are here to study the word and know exactly what he wants and he doesn't want. And so, if we do not follow his words, we will perish. Okay. Okay. Okay, okay. And, and right. Can I please say something? Mm. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, uh, to add to what Jenny said, you know, um, um, well, we're dealing with this ignorance and what you just asked. You see, we have, we have, we have the word written for us, and we have the Holy Spirit in us who remind us of what to do, what is right the truth of God, which should be our light to guide mm -hmm. our path. Mm -hmm. And he's saying that he has given us the opportunity that it is no longer you, but Christ that lives in the inside of you. He has mm -hmm. given you that, yes, because of the blood of Jesus, you are able to come to me and repent of your ways. Mm -hmm. But one thing I think that we normally forget is that when you intentionally, ignorantly go against the law of God, you will have the consequences of your sin. Mm. He mm. will forgive you. He will clean you up. He will bring you to the right path. He will, mm. he will, it's like um, 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 those, uh, those people that have problem with alcohol um, th those who have issues and all that stuff. When they mm. go to the correction center, they will correct them. But you yeah. see, that, that when the, your, your intestines and all that stuff have been affected and you are sick and all that stuff, these things, yeah, he, the healing is there. But what I'm saying is that the consequences of what you have done, you will face yeah. them. Face sure. them. Sure. And so we, we, that's why he's telling you that, hey, in this new dispensation that the enemy is roaring like a lion, you can't afford to be ignorant. Mm. You can't afford to do things in your own way and then come back and say, Lord, uh, forgive me. We are now, because we are not talking about intentional sin. This one, you have, it's ignorance. Probably you don't even know, or you know, mm. and you think that because grace and mercy abounds. Mm. 
Mm. Oh, yes, grace and mercy. God is a forgiving God. He is loving. But the consequences of the things that you are doing, it will catch up with you. Mm. And I think if we don't forget that, God will help us and we live right. Amen. <laughs> Amen. 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 So, 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 so then the point is, we cannot see whether oh, intentionally... oh, I should find a scripture for you. Yes, it's in First John one twenty eight. Thank you very much. And this That's is the... one one of the scriptures that when you 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 tell believers, they think that oh, this one oh, yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. Flesh, I am body. Yeah, how can yes. I not think? But the Bible tells you and me that the one who is born of God cannot. Ah continuous sin you cannot the seed of god is in the inside okay. of you when we accept the reality of what god is saying that he will give us the grace to walk it Please. exactly mm. thank, you. thank you 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 i like Amen. that when, Amen. When, when we accept it then he will give us the grace but once we are in denial once we are in doubt, once we feel that, oh, I'm body and soul, how can I, I'm in a fallen world, how can I not sin? So I say, well, because I would doubt it, I would that, auntie, that, that, oh, auntie, thank you, thank you, thank you, I like that. When we accept the reality of the work, let me write this down. <laughs> <laughs> You know, let me share my testimony with this particular scripture that you gave yes, here. You know, when I was growing up with the things of God, these are some of the scriptures I didn't want to hear. That you are a child of God, you cannot sin. Hey, how do you mean that I cannot sin? I am having difficulty in dealing with this thing, this boyfriend, girlfriend thing. I'm a young girl, mm -hmm. you know what, mm -hmm. yes, I just, I need some, some loving and or some relationship, somebody to feel loved. And you are mm -hmm. telling me there are certain things I can't keep on doing them because mm -hmm. I am a child of God. I cannot sin. I have hormones. They keep on staring at me. They keep on jumping here and there. So how do you expect me to? But the Bible is telling you and me that tonight, after we hear this word, grace is available for us so that mm -hmm. we can live right. Because mm -hmm. in our living rights, that is where we become the salt of the world. In our choosing to leave the word of God, that is when we become the light of the world. We can't live outside of it. That is why I believe he keeps on telling us that, hey, abide in me and I, I in you. There is no way that we can do this in our own might. This thing that he's asking us to do, that to live holy, live righteously, we cannot do it in our own might. But as we abide in him, and he abides in us. Mm. He will guide us in the right path that we should go. Mm. Hallelujah. 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 Hey, Azari, Amen. Yeah. <laughs> Jenny, I feel like you have you have you you are freezing in, in my on my computer. Me? Yeah, but I can hear you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Please, Flo says. We bless, we bless God. Um, I was going to ask a question how we can avoid the sin of ignorance, but I think that we have spoken at length about it, that for you to avoid the sin of ignorance, it means that you just have to know your word. Yeah. You have to know your word. You have to know what God expects of you yeah. as a child yeah. of God. The Bible says in 1 John 1 28 that he who abides, the abiding has come here again. <laughs> abide, oh, abide. Yeah, it's so funny now, wherever we go, it will find its way to come. <laughs> <laughs> abide is following us everywhere. Exactly. Everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> he who abides in Christ does not sin. So as a child of God, it, was, it, it comes down to the same thing. One thing, abide. If you abide in Christ, the Holy Spirit is with you. 
right. you would not be able to say. Yes, there may be certain things that you may do wrong, but that is why the Holy Spirit is there to give you conviction. So that once you are convicted, no, um, this thing that I did wasn't right. There and then you will be able to repent. You'll be able to confess your sins and then you repent. Then you will know that this is what I did. And it would, then you wouldn't be able to, then I mean, sorry, you, you would not repeat it. So we can avoid the sin of ignorance because it has great consequences on ourselves, on the P, on our loved ones, well, anyone, generations to come, generations to come, generations to come. And sometimes we may not even know that it was because of this thing that I did. That is why the thing is happening to me, and we'll be attributing it to certain things that are non-existent. So we cannot be in ignorance because we have the word of the Lord. It has been made available. If you don't have the word of the Lord, you have the Holy Spirit who will lead you into all truth. That is the only way. Because like I said earlier, sometimes even our conscience can misguide us. Mm -hmm. Those who do not have the word of the Lord and they use their conscience. Our conscience can misguide us. So our conscience is not the right means by which we should be able to judge our moral standards. As children of God, the, the word has been made available, the Holy Spirit, the ministry of the Holy Spirit is to help our walk in this life, to perfect us, to perfect us in this life um, for the coming of Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 So, please, anyone has anything else to add to before we bring our discussion to a close? Patrick. Yeah. Hello, Mariam. Yes, Patrick. Um, yeah, I just want to say thanks for the opportunity and then, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I think uh, like uh, ladies um, Rhoda said, mm -hmm. um, grace is important, but we shouldn't be ignorant that whatever we do, the Lord will ask us why mm -hmm. we are doing it. And it's important that we live by the word and we take the word of God as it is. Mm -hmm. And um, trust in the word because it is in the word that we have the strength to overcome our temptation and to stand strong in our faith in God. Amen. And we shouldn't also ignore the togetherness and the fellowship of believers because mm. it's like each of us lightening our candles and when we come together, we shine bright. Amen. Yeah. Amen. It's important Amen. that we, we grow and encourage each other. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Thanks. Amen. 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 Please, my ladies, any, yeah, well, anything? The question I want to ask is, is yes. Is, okay, I know we've said a lot about sin of ignorance, but mm -hmm. what is it teaching us tonight? What have we taken from what we have learned? What has really stood out for you that you can say, okay, first I didn't know, now I know. Mm -hmm. what, what have I taken from tonight? Hmm. Hmm. Can I say something? Yes, please. I what I've taken the little I've taken out of it is intentional sin is still sin, mm -hmm. and I I must flee from them. Mm. Yeah, and then I must maintain a relationship with the Holy Spirit so that he can convict me in each time I sin, so I can go back on the right path. Amen. 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 Um, 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 I, I, I think it's about time I need to work on that and start teaching that. There was something that 
the Lord was teaching me about what to send back to us. Mm. Mm. We know that he says that the, the, you reap certain things and all that. But you see, one of the things that come to mind right now is <coughs> you have a path in, in, the, in front of you. You have a path that God has destined for you. The very mm. moment that you, you, you transgress, thank you, Holy Spirit, you transgress, you are, it's like this, you move from the path mm. that God has set for you. Okay, I forget that my camera is this way. Now I'm always looking at the, <laughs> the computer. So it's like you are going on this path. The very moment you sin, you transgress from that path and you move from the path God has ordained for you. Mm. And this is one of the ways or something that we have not been taught. So we, we, we normally like, oh, okay, I've sinned. I've done something wrong. God, forgive me. And, they, but, and we sometimes even pray that God bring me to the right path and we, whatever. Mm -hmm. But what he showed me is like this. As you are going on this path and something happens and you transgress, you move from the path that God has, is taking you. When you ask for forgiveness and cleansing, repentance, repentance is not just asking Lord, forgive me. It's you repenting that mm. is changing from the ways what you have been doing that is the wrong thing in the sight of God. So what mm. you, the very moment you repent, not asking just for forgiveness, you repent. God mm. cleans you up and he brings you back to that path. Mm. That is why repentance is very, 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 very um, important in our work with God. Not just asking for forgiveness but changing mm. from what you are doing. I will not stress mm. it enough. And mm. so when, when he brings you back in there, then he says, continue from where you left off. He is not going to promote you without that, that, the same thing. He says, mm. what? Mm. Where he, that's why we hear people always say, okay, where you left me, mm. I'm still there waiting for you. Mm. So you go back, you, you walk side inside with him, the Holy Spirit is there to guide you. And he says, walk it. Mm. So what he does is that most of us, we don't understand why there's certain things God has promised us. It delays. Mm -hmm. We don't understand. Oh, God has promised me this, this ministry, this vision. He has promised mm. me this. He said this thing to mm. me. He has said this thing to me. Why is it taking too much time? Mm. But you see, the more we transgress, the more we transgress, mm. we delay the process. I'm mm. talking to myself right here. Mm. Mm. And so he's saying that this is all part of the ignorance thing that we are learning. He's saying that don't be mm. so ignorant mm. of the devices. I think some one of the one of the, the the scriptures of ignorance, apart from what we are studying, is ignorance of the, the devices of the enemy. Mm. And what is the devices of the enemy? His purpose is to kill to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And anything that will come into your life to do these three things, it's a device of the enemy. Mm -hmm. And it derails you. It takes you out of the path that God has already destined for you. Mm -hmm. And so we need to be very conscious of the promptings of the Holy Spirit. And when he prompts you on something, don't be sulking. Just mm -hmm. repent and change and go come back on track. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The more we spend time in, and uh, okay, this thing, this person has hurt me. Listen, mm. recently something, I, I will share this and my sister, I'll be done and I'll be out of the way. Mm. Recently, somebody did something to me and I knew I didn't have any right to be, to be, to be standing in that pain. I, had, I knew better to let it go quickly. Mm -hmm. I knew better to say, you know what, I forgive you, I'm not going to. But it's like, oh, this has been a repetitive thing. This person is keeping on doing the same thing over and over because he knows, okay, Rhoda is a Christian. Rhoda loves God. So he will come back and say, sorry to Miriam. So Miriam keeps on doing the same thing over and over again. And I was pissed off and I was angry. Then by the time I realized Miriam, two days, three days, it was difficult for me to pray because mm. I knew I was holding on to some anger mm. that I have no right to hold on to. Mm. It is an ignorance. This one is really, really real mm -hmm. full yes. ignorance, like you said. Mm -hmm. Oh, but this now the Holy Spirit is telling us these little, 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 little things. It spoils the vine. Mm -hmm. Let us not be ignorant of the devices of the enemy. Leave it to the Holy Spirit to deal with people like this. 
when it's difficult for you to let go, ask him to come in and help you. Because trust me, when I tell you, it is not easy for us in any way to leave the, the path God has given us. That is saying, he said, I am not going to leave you comfortless. Hmm. I am not going to leave you like a shepherd, a, a sheep without a shepherd. I will send you the comforter. Why did he call him the comforter? Because he knew people will hurt you. And that's the, the main description. He knew people would disappoint you. He, he knew the things you'll be going through. The person who has committed to love you, he will hurt you. He knows it. And so he said, you don't worry. That one that is coming, he's the one who is going to comfort your emotions, your soul. Mm -hmm. He's the mm -hmm. one who is going to keep you healthy. Amen. 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 God bless you. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. God bless you. God bless you so much, my lady. God bless you. For me, what what I have <clears throat> sorry, what I have taken out of this is. Um, my lady, you have said it, how serious God takes ignorance because of the consequences that come with it. If there were no consequences, I don't think that he would take them that serious for him to tell Moses, to tell the people of Israel to go through that long process of purification if um, they sin ignorantly or unintentionally. So if God is taking ignorance, the sin of ignorance that, that serious, then it means that as children of God, we should, we should also take it as serious as, as it is written and um, not be ignorant. We, sh we shouldn't entertain ignorance. We should do everything in our power by the help of the spirit to be knowledgeable, yeah. to be knowledgeable, to, to know what is expected of us at every given time. There shouldn't be any space, any room for us to be ignorant, ignorant of um, our work with him, ignorant of what, what, what is expected of us. It's, it's a no, no. It's a no no because at the end of the day, whether you are ignorant or not, you will be judged. <laughs> yes, you will be judged. Their fine will God, come God to your will head. hold you accountable. <laughs> God will you hold know, you accountable. You know, you are talking about this. Let me, funny enough, uh, 30 seconds. The mm. other time, um, um, my husband received a fine. Like he passed through a place that he's not, he's not supposed to pass. And he goes, oh, What is this? You know, when. You have been caught on camera and they send you a charge. <laughs> what, what, what is one? It's, it's exactly like that. But you know what? The most fun, interesting part of our journey is that, Miriam, we do not see it. That is we it. We do not see our spiritual finds. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. We do mm. not see it. Mm. Because I think if we really see the, 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 the finds that we, we get spiritually, we would correct our ways. Mm. We mm. don't see them mm. because mm. <laughs> when these things come, when they charge you, because oh, I didn't know, and Jenny, you, 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 you drive, so you know when you get a ticket because yeah. you, 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 there is a place you shouldn't stop and you stop. And like, oh, but yes, <laughs> and the that, you, you see, funny enough, the 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 evidence is there. To prove to you that we caught you on camera, camera <laughs> so you can deny it. <laughs> <laughs> oh god help us yeah yeah but yeah <laughs> thank you thank you holy spirit that is why we need the holy spirit every day we do every day every day every day every day, every day. Every day. Every day. we just need it yeah yeah that's a gift to you Today, some people's network is not, 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 not. Mm -hmm. Anyway. This, mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I think we have come to the end of our discussion tonight. It was very insightful and I open up. Mine too. Mine too keeps Yeah, I've never yeah, seen yours like this.
he's gone out. Yeah, he goes on and off like that. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. Thank you. Have wow. you last week? Hmm. We thank God, we thank God, we bless God. I am so grateful for the opportunity, my lady. It has, it has been an insightful week for me. Um, I keep coming back to my notes to read and to add and to subtract and to read. And the first time I read the whole of Leviticus, I was like, you know, the Leviticus thing is sort of like so ritualistic you know, but when I took my time and I used the life application Bible and I read it and I got a better understanding of it because the words are simpler, I think I appreciated the entire scripture and um, it has been an eye opener, very insightful. I'm very grateful. It has added to my knowledge of the scriptures and to, now I am not ignorant. No. <laughs> You have been delivered from the spirit of I, ignorance. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I'm grateful for the opportunity meeting, and I want to thank you. The notes you made for all the researchers. God bless you. God bless you, my lady. God bless you, Patrick, for joining tonight. And I pray that next week. You will we'll join my you. Oh yes. yeah. And and, and <laughs> Mrs. and Mrs. Diaba as well, if she's yeah. available. And Auntie Gifty, God bless you for joining. God bless everyone who joined, but who have just um logged out at the moment. I'm I'm grateful. Um we thank God for bringing us this far. Auntie Jenny. Um, no, since Patrick is visiting us for the first time, Patrick, I don't know whether I pray next week you join, but if you don't join, please just pray for us to close our meeting. Please. I pray now. Yes. Father, we thank you for your time and for the time you've given us to study and to discuss your word. You said in your word that your word comes not void but it accomplishes the purpose for which it is spoken mm -hmm. and i pray that our hearts are the fertile ground for which the seed of your word is sown on mm -hmm. and i pray that as we leave and continue to walk on this path of trusting and walking and being obedient to the voice of the holy spirit that our hearts will be so aware of your doings in our lives and that our lives will begin to be fruitful and productive. And I pray that you continue to guide and strengthen us. And I pray for my fellow dear sisters that you continue to bless them and give them the foresight, the vision, the wisdom, the direction, the insight in whatever areas and directions that you are leading them, that they continue to walk in the light of your grace. I pray that you continue to build their hearts and their lives with um, mm. your word to be more kind, to be more patient, to be more filled with the fullness of your love. I pray that you will trench us deep in your love, that your love will engulf us, your love will overwhelm us, that in this love we can show for the love of Christ in everywhere we find ourselves. We pray for the rest of the days and for the rest of the week that you bless us that you cause mm -hmm. your light to shine upon us, that, Lord, you provide for us, that you direct our course, that in moments of crisis and in moments of pain and in moments of desperation, we will not forget to know that you are with us and you are not against us, that you are for us and that you are our Father and that you love us so much, and that you're giving Christ on our behalf, that in him we can have faith and confidence to know that you are our Father. And I pray that you continue to pour your, your love in our hearts as a family, that you continue to build us up together, that we can train our children in the image and the light of your grace. I yeah. thank you for tonight, and I ask for your blessings. In your name, I pray with thanksgiving. Amen. 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 Patrick, God bless you. God bless you all. God bless you all. My lady.
<laughs> in fact, I don't want to end though, although I've received it. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Miriam. God bless you so much. We've we've I know we've enjoyed it. Isn't it, Jenny? We have loved it. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. It. With your scriptures and all that. It. Yeah, yeah, it's been amazing. <laughs> you and should know that you should know that I've been studying. Yeah, of course. Yeah, we saw your notes. We know you've been studying. God bless you. Keep on ministering to you. May the Lord Himself keep on ministering to you and showing you more revelation. Amen. Yeah, Amen. Yeah, Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and Amen. Uh, Mr. Um, Patrick, God bless you so much. In fact, I have been enjoying your your contributions a lot. I yes. I love I love learned people who loves the word. And I, can, I know I can stay with you forever and listen to you. Listen I'm to telling you. you. Amen. Yeah, when somebody you. is talking and they know the word what they are about you know yes. you know yes. you know yes. and and yes. we are blessed to have you tonight and i hope that you keep the link every even when mariam doesn't invite you every when <laughs> god willing at 9 p.m we are here please join us and be a blessing to us as we will be a blessing to you as well and please we are approaching your wife to join wheel of hope women <laughs> um, what time do you meet um okay our meetings we normally have our facebook live on wednesdays but it's um it's on spiritual renovation <laughs> so we will come back <laughs> we will come back after easter and um yeah so now we are meeting on wednesdays for our bible studies Thursdays. and then on sundays come again Thursdays. Thursdays. Oh, Thursdays. Thursdays. Sorry. Thursdays for our Bible studies and then Wednesday is uh, Sundays at 10 p.m. for prayer. Yeah, we do pray on the same line, 10 p.m. to 11 p.m. It's our one, one, hour, one hour meetings. And so um, God bless you all. You've been now the evangelism is going on. My books are still available. Win souls, two souls and get a book signed for you into the deep. <laughs> you get your own book signed, autographed with your name in it. So please, now my Miriam, though you are, but if I've invited somebody, so I left with another person, and you get your book, you've done well. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 the wife is joining, so I'm I'm done. I'm done with it. <laughs> no, if you are family, you don't be that. Ah, you you did well. <laughs> <laughs> if, yeah, I'm still waiting for yours. Anyway, thank you so much. It's been an amazing time in the presence of the Lord. And now yeah. we have no excuse to be ignorant of the word of God. Oh, and yeah. I will encourage you that please depend on the Holy Spirit. I, I learned something about the Holy Spirit that was so amazing to me. And this is your bonus mark that I will share with you. When you read 1 Corinthians 13 about love, if you have time and you go home today, take it and read it and place, when he says love is this, love is this, put the Holy Spirit there and read it. I have never in my life saw it that way, but yesterday when I was yeah. reading it, wow. and I saw that the Holy Spirit is long suffering. Wow. The Holy Spirit is patient. It took the burden of me being everything that he says love is. Yes, we know that you say that God is love. But the Holy mm. Spirit is the one who is here to equip me to do what I have to do. And so when you see him as he is this, then your dependence will be so much on him. My God, don't let me preach there. But please, this is for you. Tonight, as you take First Corinthians 13 to read, Love, when he's describing what love is, just put the Holy Spirit there and let that love engulf you and know that it's the Holy Spirit who is there to live through us, to be who God has called us to be. So Amen. God bless you and keep you. May he favor you until we meet again on Sunday. I Amen. love you the love of God. Let us keep on sharing the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. And you have Amen. no cause from tonight to be ignorant of the law of God. Have Amen. a blessed day. Have a Good night. Day. And I love you all. Love you all. We love you. We love Bye. you. Bye. Bye.